I know that our convener will probably be sharing the screen in a minute, but before that, as usual, the antitrust policy notice goes up. So it seems there's quite a bit of interest in where we can go next with education. And yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Shane, for showing the antitrust notice. So yes. can we well, start or do we wait for two more minutes? Sure, we can do that. And while we wait before officially handing over, um, maybe I'll just give some interesting background about online courses. So mm -hmm. the LF training team have actually approached me several times and said, how about an online course? How about an online course? And until around now, uh, we had so many other things to do that it seemed like that was something for later. Uh, but it's something that has been on the mind of the LF training team, and they're very happy to support it. Um, it's something that people have asked about a bit. And I think now that open chain is ISO standard, and we're, we're really getting into a situation where our to be looking at it temporarily. Um, it's going to be really, really good if we could do something around an online course. And there's been a proposal, a very simple proposal, uh, but a good one, an important one, by Balakrishna from Bosch that we take the existing open chain training slides, which are static, obviously, they're not online, they're not at all ready for it. Um, and we take some of the existing Linux Foundation training and see if we can mix it up a bit to make an open chain online training course, um, which we would then host on the Linux Foundation infrastructure. And if I remember correctly, the LF team told me that infrastructure is uh, based on some industry standards, so it will also be transportable in future, in theory, at least. So we've got 15 people on the line. It's not my show, <laughs> it's Balakrishna's show. So I'll hand over right now, um, and I will be a participant to listen and learn as well. Thank you, Shane. Thank you for the uh, introduction. It made my job a little more easier today. Yeah, so hello, everyone. My name is Balakrishna. As Shane already mentioned, I'm from uh, Robert Bosch. And uh, uh, I'll be sharing a presentation. Just one moment here. Yeah. OK, please do let me know if you can see my screen. It's working perfectly. Thank you. So uh, this presentation is prepared by Hans Maltekern. He is one of my reporting managers, bless me. Uh, before I start with the uh, presentation, I would like to give a small background about the training part, uh, training part why we chose this path to have a more universal education. See, uh, whenever we have had uh, whenever we have had any interaction with other OEs or other companies or other partners, or even during conferences, there have been one or two, uh, you know, uh, changes or variations in understanding what is open source compliance or what is open source contribution. Why is the compliance activity so much easier in some companies and in some companies, why is the contribution so much easier? We wanted to figure out what are the best practices among all of these things. While figuring out these parts, we understood, okay, not all the companies have a universal education on compliance and contribution. And uh, as we kept on saying, we came, first thing is we came across a uh, Linux Foundation curriculum. That is, uh, uh, Hans showed me this Linux Foundation curriculum. And then we started doing the Linux Foundation courses, which were available for free. Once we started doing Linux Foundation courses, we thought, yes, this is a very good course. It provides a very good basic building block. Why, why don't we adopt this training or why don't we uh, you know, hire this training or buy this training on a subscription basis and host it in, in house and then let all our uh, uh, associates or employees study from this as well so that there will be universal knowledge because Linux Foundation training is available not only for Bosch but for every other company. Then we will have a common language to talk to about when it comes to compliance and contribution. 
And after that, we came across Open Chain curriculum, which made life more easier because we got to know that Open Chain uh, stand a specification will become an ISO standard. So eventually, the number of contributions would increase for Open Chain curriculum. Uh, and the training is also uh, the Open Chain curriculum is also will will also be respected to a standard where it might. Uh, you know, help us adhere more easily or adopt the ISO standards more easily. And sometime during February, we had this discussion with uh, Shane and Andrew Katz and a uh, few people from ARM. Uh, so during these discussions, we found out that uh, there have already been some contributions onto the open chain curriculum and they're still open for the contribution. And again, during the same meetings, we also heard from some people like uh, Marcel Kurzman, Oliver Fend, that there is another channel called as Sharing Creates Values on GitHub, where Open Chain members are again one of the key contributors. So there, uh, I'm not sure if my screen is visible. Can you see the GitHub page which I've opened? No, it's uh, still stuck on the, the slide. Okay, let me just try. You may need to reshare and choose whole screen or choose a new um, item. Uh, yeah. Sure, that sounds better. Okay, uh, so now can you see my screen? Perfect. Yes. Yeah. So uh, then we were introduced to this channel. Here, we found different user stories and a lot of other expectations on how a developer would like to understand his compliance routines, how a project manager would like to understand his user, user routines, and how the expert, expert would like to learn what is necessary for him to know when he's looking for a compliant document. Right. So we found those user stories here. We, we learned some of the expectations here. Then. Finally, when we were talking to Shane and when I was talking to my uh, uh, colleague as well, or uh, my reporting manager, Hans Maldegan. So when we were discussing, uh, we discussed, okay, why don't we put all these together? And if Shane and LF and the, all the other open chain board and contributors agree, then we, we combine best of all of these trainings and give it back to Linux Foundation so that they make it into a web-based training and all of us can adopt it if we are interested in it. Basically, uh, we are interested in it. So we want to participate in it. And any other company who's interested in it, even they can take it. Any individual who is interested in uh, you know, well put together training, even they can take this training and there would be a universal training available everywhere. So that was the basic idea. I know I said it would be a short story, but I think it was a little long. I hope I didn't bore anyone. <laughs> no, it was a great story. And this call, uh, <laughs> this moment reminds me of the early days of the curriculum slides, uh, where we had the first few companies get together. And you know, we, we were saying in that time, the exact same thing, that if we could somehow share and harmonize, uh, we will have a significant advantage in the long term. Indeed, I think, Sammy, you predated me on the curriculum slides by quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right, that's right. Yes. That's right. So, so you're right, Shane. I mean, uh, as, as you all know, Arm was the first company to uh, contribute uh, some of our internal training to the project. Um, and and we, we took a pragmatic approach. We looked at the training, and I think at the time, uh, myself and Jelaine Lovejoy um, had a chat with 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 uh, David uh, 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 from Qualcomm, and sort of said, so, you know, just trying to get ideas as to what what sort of training they conduct within Qualcomm, and we shared with him what we do, and it was very similar, um, and. You know, funny that that sort of story that we said to 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 Dave Marsh. I bet you, uh, sort of, our slides look exactly the same as your slides, and and sure enough, both both companies did donate um, the training material, and there was quite a bit of overlap. Um, so so, I, I you know I I think I think harmonizing is definitely a big positive uh, uh, step. I, I think one of the things in terms of just being pragmatic, having uh, having sort of um, rolled out the internal training within ARM, 
uh, I think um, we should not consider doing a one gigantic training. Yeah. It should be it should be sort of a a, a, a small chunks um, uh, of of training uh, with specific purpose with specific sort of uh, target. Um, so, so that's one of the key things that we really uh, need to make sure, because again, um, uh, it, 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 there is nothing, all of us have sat down through training of a couple of hours and, and you know, you just think, okay, it sort of kill me now, I can, <laughs> cannot take any more of this. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sammy, can but, I... Can, so, can, yeah, I, can, yeah. I, can I can I make a suggestion to to address that point because I think that's a really really important one. Yeah. Um, so uh, can I just um, share my screen um, because somebody somebody let me have screen sharing and I can just show you some work that I've I've done on this. Okay, it should um, work now. I've set multiple participants. Brilliant. Okay, let's just um, see if I can get point this to the right place. Uh, if not. Okay. Should I stop sharing first? Uh, yeah. Oh, yes, that would be helpful. Yes, yeah. 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 Well, I do have some more slides left. I'll show that later. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, fantastic. And Balakrishnan, that was um, that was um, really interesting intro. So thank you for that. Um, right. Hang on. Let's see if I can. Right, okay. It doesn't like the fact that I've got two. I'll just show you the whole desktop. That's probably the easiest thing. Um, Oh, hang on, no, there we go. That should do it. Um, right, can okay. you see a, a spreadsheet of the policy template there? Yes. Right. Okay. So this is a slightly more updated version than the the, the version that's the the standard. Um, which and, I, and obviously when when I finish tweaking this, I'm going to su submit this um, and upload it alongside the other one. Um, but basically, I, so I've done some work on the background to this already. And um, so on here, there's a, there's a training tab here, and if you can see that, it's a little bit small. But basically, I've taken um, the existing material. So this is stuff that will look uh, very familiar to Sammy. Um, and I've broken it down into modules. Um, and then I've described what each of these modules contains. There's a little bit of tweaking in there, but basically this is sort of an overview of what we've got. Um, and then along the top here, we've got, we've got a set of different roles. Um, and if I go onto this roles tab here, you will see that um, these are all a uh, selection of roles that you may have of individuals within an, um, an open source compliance program, what their role is, what, what they do. Um, and then there's a code next here, uh, next to them here, which um, um, just in, indicates what it is. So for example, um, external legal counsel is ex counsel, architect is arc, for example. Um, and um, the uh, and the, this this is this is the, you can see where I, I um, got this from. It's from a Linux Foundation um, document, which I think is um, one of the documents that um, Ibrahim Haddad um, has, has produced. Um, that uh, talks a little a little bit about about roles. So the idea is to try and keep this as consistent as possible with other materials that the Linux Foundation um, has already generated. Um, so if we go back to the training tab here, so you'll see that these are the various um, different um, uh, codes against each of the roles. And then one in here basically means that this person needs to do um, a course on this. So there's lots of gaps here, for example, um, um, if, um, if you're uh, uh, if you're external counsel, then you don't necessarily, if you follow this down here, you'll see that there's nothing um, in tooling types. You don't really need to know very much about tooling, for example. Um, and, um, you know, you don't need to know about compliance pitfalls because you should know about that already. Um, so this is just a very, very basic outline of the way that you could populate. Now, the idea, these are ones at the moment, um, but the idea is that you could then have um, separate numbers with the higher number indicating a more advanced course. So um, it could be the case um, that, um, you know, everyone should do um, a sort of a basic intro on compliance management, but there may be a level two or a level three, which is appropriate. Um, for, for for different roles as well. So this gives um, you know a, an organisation flexibility to first of all to be able to modularise the courses. So you've got all different modules down here, and you can add additional modules. I've got space here for product project specific modules um, uh, that are specific to a particular organisation. Um, and then and then there's an indication as to whether if you're in a particular role you need to be undertaking that module. And the third dimension, which we don't have at the moment, is whether we should have different modules of different levels of complexity. So there's an, an introductory course, an intermediate course, an advanced course, 
um, for example. So this is this is really just an indication of, uh, you know, this ties in with documentation that's already being used by the Open Chain project. It ties in with the existing materials that we've already got in terms of the curriculum, um, and it ties in with um, sort of other activities that the Linux Foundation is, is up to as well. So I just thought this might be helpful as a sort of framework to try to develop um, a set of training materials. Um, yeah, and that was it. Thank you. So it does, Andrew, and I do like the idea about the sort of training. I mean, uh, we have chosen actually uh, just to, to 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 extend on that. We have chosen um, a sort of other options as, as to whether something is mandatory, uh, something is optional, something is uh, recommended. You know, so so we, we have various classifications. So, for example, our legal team um, had to do every single module because we said, okay, if you're advising um, the, the developers and the engineers, you need to know what they have been told in the training. Yeah. So, so, so just for, for their information, rather than saying, well, actually you don't understand about compliance, but you need to just know what, what we have told um, the developers, what they needed to do with regards to compliance so that when you're advising them, you're advising them with, with, with that in mind. So, so I do, uh, I do agree that sort of that some some sort of matrix with with again with classification, you know, that that yes, you have to do it, or uh, this is recommended, mm -hmm. or okay, no, no need to do it at all would be would be quite useful. You can also add how, how we did our last trials here. Um, the idea was also based on the rules. And then uh, we use the use cases that you have as a role. So in a, with a specific role, for example, software developer, you work in specific processes and in those processes you will uh, face use cases. And, and then I, I had a question, okay, as an open source officer now, what do I want this role to know at exactly that use case? So for example, the developer needs to choose a new uh, component. So then I ask, okay, what do I need him to know about exactly to to face this this use case? And based on that, I developed some some questions for our assessment, and uh, and that's it. And that was the starting point when I had this question. And okay, what like a driving license? Okay, what does the software development now need to answer? And then uh, the other question was then, yeah, but what do I need to train him then <laughs> up front so that he can answer that question? And and so that's, we did pretty good experience with this. Um, so also to be able uh, to, because we had a lot of developers who were already experienced, who, who already had that knowledge. So we just made the assessment with them and directly saw, ah, okay, here we have some gaps and uh, we need some more training. If I may, um... I'm, I'm Reza Alevi, I'm part of Vipro Open Source Practice. Uh, I think this is my first first call in this um, in this session. Um, so please ignore my, um, if, if you already discussed this, uh, have you guys um, considered any certification process or some to be certified uh, somehow that could be recognized um, um, whether internally or as part of open chain something um, which encourage people to get that, to go through this test or exam or whatever you call it? Absolutely, Reza. We actually have three mm. things in play for the standard. One, it's just been posted into the chat, is our self-certification allowing companies to go through a yes, no questionnaire to see what their status is with respect conforming to the standard. And of course, the standard also has independent compliance assessment and um, it's got third party certification. But the actual training program itself, and this is interesting because you've touched on something important. Our curriculum slides have eight fundamental chapters. And at the end of each chapter, we have a check your understanding series of questions. And the mental model was that people could use this at the end of the chapter just to revise or a company could take those check your understanding questions and essentially have a, an open chain curriculum exam. And, and that leaves us at the point, and we put this on the back burner purposefully, do we make an open chain education um, exam? And you know, 
the, the online thing seems natural there. And Reza, I believe you have a lot of experience in this field through YPRO and also your work in things like BSI. Yeah, that's, um, that's, that's correct. Um, the reason I said this is just because if we create this individual, I, I'm, uh, I know about the certification process you kindly mentioned in terms of the compliance program itself. But my point was mainly about individual people who get this certification, get certified. So uh, it, it would encourage me. So for instance, if I move from organization A to organization B and I apply for a job and they ask me what sort of experience uh, 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 I have as, you know, whether, whether the, whatever the job is uh, around open source, I can actually use this, say, well, I, I, I am certified through open chain uh, Linux foundation program. And my certification, you know, it's got this uh, expired date, which is in, you know, next year or two years, whatever is the, uh, the, 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 the process it's <clears throat> set up <That's clears throat> and then take this. Work. Yeah. And then take this with me uh, and applying job. They say, okay, that, that's a really good criteria to, 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 to understand this person has got the right uh, level of uh, you know knowledge skills uh, because it's been certified by Open Chain, and uh, and we can you know one of the really you know I'm not saying the job is given based on that certification, but one of the point which people get encouraged to get certified and use this for a career progress progress in career and also expand this because when you certify individuals, you basically giving a lot of weight into the compliance itself to the to the the, the standard or the, uh, the the compliance program so imagine as you you are a chief inform uh, sorry chief open source officer in, in in a company or you are a head of open source program office in a company and look at the list of candidates for this job and you see someone is certified in here let's just pick that guy that person Absolutely. And you know, what might also be interesting um, is that we, I, I can take an action item to talk with LF training about whether we can have an open chain training certification. And my own personal perspective would be, it would also be fascinating that over time, third party providers might also offer their own certification as part of their portfolio, um, leading to a, a potential marketplace of people getting certified. I'm just bringing that up because I'm a huge a fan of market dynamics. And I, I'm fully aware that if LF has an open chain certification, that will essentially be the canonical source of open chain training. Um, I'll need to talk with LF training about that. But it would also be fascinating over time to see other companies um, building out training options and offering their own certification. I think that will be a healthy development across the community. That's just an observation on my side. Um, but as you can see, LF training does have certification and I'm sure we could fit into that and uh, work with them. So I'll take an action item to come back to this group after approaching LF training. Shane, um, we found we found it to be very effective to actually build uh, building the sort of the knowledge checking within the training uh, itself. So, for example, um, uh, sort of our our uh, attendees of the training um, had to complete a uh, a quiz and um, they had to get the 80% mark to be able to sort of get their certificate that way. Is that, is that something that the Linux Foundation do? I, I, I don't remember, I haven't done yes. one recently. I, I believe that there's a couple of different training approaches. Um, one is simply to have completed going through an item, but I think there's also more formal training where people get issued a training certificate and whatnot. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, we, we simply haven't covered this as a will we do it yet conversation, but it seems timely. Okay. Okay. So the, the, the other thing, um, just going back to this modular, um, uh, modular sort of format of the training, um, I think one of the challenges that we, we, um, we had was that we, we did hire an external contractor to, to make the changes from a, um, you know, just a, a, a sort of a, a, a PowerPoint set of slides into a more sort of um, uh, online uh, training. 
but one of the traps that we fell into is that um, we were not able to change that format. We had to go back to the external, the, uh, external sort of um, um, contractor to, to, to do that for us. So it's something that we have to really consider because I suspect many organizations might like the idea of actually being able to access uh, uh, training uh, sort of that is hosted in the Linux Foundation, but they might also have a specific need to tweak that, that, that training to their own purposes. So I think that's a level of flexibility that we should have available because again, some organizations might prefer to sort of say, uh, uh, we want to host this training um, internally within our infrastructure, but we also need to adapt it so that it's specific to our organization. Absolutely. Yes, Sabi, actually, we, we, we did have this discussion with uh, Kate Stewart and a few more guys from Linux Foundation. Uh, Shane had put us in touch with them. And uh, I, if I remember correctly, they said the format they have it in First thing is it is it can be hosted in house in other companies, and uh, the other thing is uh, they said it's a normalized industry standard format they're using. I uh, again I also forgot what format it is, which allows if we have the same sort of developer same technology developers within our company, we would be able to add on some end slides or the prefix slides to it or the content to it. That's what I heard. And on the pure content licensing side, our curriculum naturally is CC0. Uh, we might try to borrow some of the LF existing training course material, but I will seek to get that under CC0 as well. So that just like everything else in OpenChain, this training course will be available with no restrictions whatsoever for adoption uh, and alteration, expansion or whatever. I think that should be our guiding principle always because so many people need to do something special, as, as Sammy, you pointed out. And it would be easier for all the other contributors to also take it without any tension. Like they, they, they do not have to worry, okay, I'm violating any license or the copyright of LF, right. and then they can just yeah. take it up. Yeah, that's right, yeah. that's right. Yes, so, and I, I think uh, it should always be CC0, so they don't even have to think about anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we, we we just started the discussion and it's going in a really good pace, right, Shane? Yeah. yeah it's uh, quite surprising, so... actually. Nineteen people on the first call. We had twenty. Someone ran away. It's um, a great start. Yeah. Um, so, Alan Krishna, how would you uh, like to take it forward? What would you like to do? And you have more slides, yeah. I think. Yes, I have some more slides left, but before that, the modularized approach, what was explained by uh, 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 Andrew Katz and Sammy, it was really great we, because we were even, we are also proceeding in the same directions. I'll also show you in sample a uh, little later, but uh, we have, uh, so Andrew's uh, module modules are at a higher level where we see what courses have to be applied for individual roles. And then um, Marcel and Sammy, they saw what roles have to get what sort of education. We just deep, uh, we, we just went down a little more deeper and then we saw what topics have to be covered in which way based on the user stories that have been provided in the uh, sharing creates values. I'll go there. But before that, um, okay, why isn't it working? Can you see my screen? Yes, no problem. Okay. Okay. So the goal and purpose has already been discussed where we develop a, a Linux foundation training and we share it with the Linux foundation. And how, what is the approach we do it? We do not create a new training, but we use all the different roles and user stories that have been provided in uh, the Sharing creates value GitHub page. Please excuse the car horn of the signal. Yeah. And uh, we combine them with the LFC trainings and the open chain curriculum. And then we come out with a modularized, more sleeker, easily understandable, more like layman understandable training. Uh, I know it's too much to ask for to expect a layman understandable training, but that might that can be our goal, one of the goals probably. So we come up with such sort of training which can be made available on the Linux Foundation as a web-based training. 
right and uh, how do we do it uh, so we did discuss on okay what should we have in the trainings and uh, how should we modularize it if we should have certification and all those things but how do we take it forward so when we were discussing this uh, internally we came across what steps would we have to take take up uh, if we have to make it a regular practice if we have to make this training a living uh, you know organism where the updates happen regularly first thing is we have to define objectives we have to select the content most of the content is already selected that is we have the lfc trainings and uh, we have open chain curriculum we have other github uh, uh, repository which we are discussing about we have to organize these content in a way like okay uh, there is copyright material present in the linux foundation courses and then there's a copyright reference available in open chain and then in other one we have to take out all the individual applicable topics like uh, in a modular format organize them into different sections and then probably we can volunteer and take up each topic based on our comfort and expertise and then start working out on the topics like adapting the new user user stories or the rules to all the topics and then sharing them with the lf checking with them on how they can uh, you know make it into web based content what more information they would need for the active voice of the training where there would be you know a, a audible voice that would be heard and then for the subtext what more extra details they would need if they would need an extra example we need to create such uh, you know uh, uh, examples in in a file with for example um, as an example i would have a file with a source code where the copyright would be in a commented section and below the copyright there would be description of what the open source file is about and what would be the liabilities uh the license would be explained in some conditions in some conditions directly the license text would be pasted there so we can create such examples and share them with the linux foundation technicians or the training developers who can turn that in uh, who who can convert that into uh you know a web based training and uh, finally the, we would need reviewers across globe who uh, you know who can uh, Uh, read the training which uh, which has been developed uh, into such user stories and understand yes this applies even in our country because again the open source com- open source compliance even though there is a common understanding that we should not violate licenses and copyrights country to country again there would be some changes in understanding of copyrights and how the license compliance have to be carried out so such review activity should be supported but of course that before that there's a peer review activity where the content has to be checked for correctness and then later since uh, lf and open chain curriculum and all these things are available in close to 11 or 12 languages is it i'm not sure uh, many, lang- many, la- many languages many languages many languages <laughs> yeah so if interested uh, we do know that Jap- uh, japan go working group they are extremely active more than any other working group i've seen actually uh, at least when i have had a discussion with them so probably they would want to translate it to their language so we we would need more contributors who could join with us and then translate it to their respective languages whichever they prefer and then again share the same thing with linux foundation have it produced in the same phase and all these things can be made possible by having biweekly or a triweekly meetings until the topic reach, reaches a certain maturity and the training content is given for first for prototype at least for po- first prototype development at least after that we can reduce the number of discussions and increase more github commits so that it can be taken from their github or any other repository commits so this uh this is our proposal so far on how do uh, what we have to do and how can we possibly do but of course this is open for discussion uh since you know this is a contribution proposal so any queries or points up till here after this i would show the example uh hi bala this is dinesh here hi dinesh hi actually one one question from my side is that actually i already saw this linux training thing and i have taken this training and i was planning to uh um 
I mean, expose my entire organization to this training for, uh, as, a as part of a compliance process. The one challenge that we faced is that uh, the content, uh, I mean, everyone needs to log in into the uh, Linux Academy training before they take this thing. Can we, can't we just uh, skip the login and uh, move directly to the training session? Is that even possible? Or if you are planning to integrate all those training sessions in one place as under open chain umbrella, that would also be great. And uh, yeah, because it, there is some less, uh, you may, you understand what I mean, uh, less overhead in. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, Dinesh. I, I, uh, I mean, I understand uh, your you know, a concern where uh, there would I, be a login I, overhead and then yeah, there is I, also GDPR involved with our companies. So yes, uh, but other way, what your company can do is we had discussed this with the uh, Linux Foundation people. They can offer you the training to be hosted within your company for a certain amount of subscription. I think you can take up that discussion with uh, uh, Shane and uh, Kate Stewart. They'll put you in touch with the actual people who can make that possible. Okay. And to, to add to that, Dira, I'm just. So I think the LF training people themselves generally want to have the LF branded training behind a login so they can monitor the metrics and so on. Yeah. Um, but certainly I will ask them about our options. I'm guessing that the options will be one, it's hosted as part of the LF portfolio and it will have a login. Two, they can help you self host it or three, uh, It'll be available on our repositories under CC0, so you could self-host it totally on your own. I know that's not ideal, and I will double check, but I imagine that's the situation we're in, because LF training also need to build out metrics of engagement and so on for internal review. Okay. Okay, sure. Thank you, Dinesh. Um... Otherwise, they all get fired. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> yeah, so um, uh, this is our pro proposal so far. So any points or anything you would like to share uh, with respect to the proposal? Can we uh, take up the activity here in the education board? Well, the, the place of hosting all this training should be one, ideally it should be like one place. Either it should be the open compliance or it should be like uh, Linux foundation. Yeah, is that possible so that uh, people don't have to run here and there to take different kind of trainings of, from different? Yes, Dinesh. So that is the original goal that we combine all these trainings and then uh, we share it with the Linux Foundation technical developers or the web content developers. And then they develop this into a web, uh, web training and make it available on their platform. Ah, okay. uh, whoever is interested, they can access the uh, you know, jointly developed training on the Linux Foundation server itself, or as Shane mentioned, we can have it hosted in-house or get it in CC0 and see, but uh, the last possibility, which is yet to check, get it in CC0 and see uh, what is the best way to refer it. Mm -hmm. Right so now, we... uh... oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Yes, yeah, Sam, you can. No, 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 it's okay, please go ahead. Yeah, actually right now, what is the total number of trainings? Uh, I mean, the more the three trainings that I saw was already in the Linux one place, like Linux Academy. Yes. Apart from that, is there any other trainings that? Uh... Apart from that, uh, we do not have. Uh, I mean, at least I have not come across much trainings in uh, L, uh, Linux Foundation as a curriculum part. But uh, the other trainings which we are referring to is Open Chain Curriculum One. Uh, which we want to combine with the LF existing trainings. And uh, another uh, content which we want to mix and match with these two reference materials or the curriculum is uh, there's a GitHub page here called a Sharing Creates Values. Mm -hmm. And there are user stories on how uh, each yeah. user, each software end user would like to understand his open source uh, topic. Okay, okay. So, 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 so and, and just to be clear, the, um, the curriculum, the open chain curriculum is, is a huge, huge uh, amount oh, of yeah. content. So, so, you know, I, I, I think last <laughs> time I, I looked, it was, uh, it was sort of in the, in the over a hundred, uh, um, uh, slides. 
So, so that's quite quite a, a large chunk, which is why I originally suggested that it is modularized in smaller chunks because you just can't can't take all of that. Uh, can I, do we know what format the uh, Linux Foundation, the content team, um, uh, uh, prefers? Sort of, are they sort of? Do they have a specific format, Shane? Do you know? I'll I'll take an action item to check with them. Yeah. Um, the last time I talked with them, I believe they basically said to have it structured in HTML and they can take it right. from there. Right. I will double check with them. Okay. Okay. Sorry, may I ask one, one question? Maybe Shane, you can answer. Um, in terms of the audience, <clears throat> um, do we have a different level of education in here? Uh, who we're we targeting this with? Uh, are we um, targeting uh, technical people, non-technical people, and are we tar targeting at what level of organization in terms of education? Is it basic? Is yes. it advanced? Uh, that's that's that need. I think that needs to be um, clarified in in order for 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 organization to understand this is this is the level for you know it, this is advanced for instance or whatever. Absolutely. And Reza, it's, it's also a time for reflection on our part. Traditionally, our curriculum model has been that we're looking at technologically aware people, often software uh, people and OSPO people. So essentially program managers, uh, legal people who do know a little bit of technical stuff, uh, the open source program office and the programmers themselves. In the context of the training, it was never meant to be super granular. So our training starts with what is intellectual property and in its first form goes through to developer guidelines. Not super deep in each topic, but certainly making sure people understand what it is. So long story short, uh, technology aware, beginner to intermediate, ensuring they have the framework to learn more has been our traditional approach. But you know, Balakrishna and the team here, it's uh, the ball is in your court to think what's appropriate today. Yeah, she, uh, so the one reason why we proposed it could be lame and uh, understandable is because, see, uh, we are looking at uh, the perspective like we are surrounded only by software engineers when we look at this uh, technology aware audience. But uh, sometimes what we try to, uh, what we have to struggle with is when we go to external councils, they might be experts in copyrights or uh, compliance part, or the, uh, you know, uh, they might be experts on how to handle the license violation. But when we have to explain them the technicalities that is attached with the copyright or the technicalities that is attached with how uh, integration mechanism works with the license, uh, for example, if I may state it, uh, some of the GPL, uh, uh, you know, technicalities for devoization or something like this, when we have to explain this to external councils, it becomes very difficult. So that was one of the reasons uh, why I said, if we can make any reigning layman understandable, then there's no party who's not understood, even the management. Sometimes our management might have come back, come from a business uh, background. And uh, if we explain them in technical aspects, they would say, how much money is it going to cost me? And uh, uh, they wouldn't understand anything more about why exactly is it going to cost them money? So that, these were some of the aspects we thought about and we thought, okay, if, is it at all possible to make any training claim and understandable? But of course, it's a long shot. Initially, we can concentrate a technology aware people, uh, you know, uh, as an audience. Later, probably when we have time and we have more contributors, we can refine and refine and refine the training. We can make it a living organism and make it into a lame and understandable training, right? Because open source is not going to die anytime in the next hundred years, probably. So you don't have intention to create two different different that different I, I actually I'm going to, to, to say I, I think we need to start with a baseline that that's how I would like to um, think of it and the baseline is something that is scalable to the majority of people 
uh, once you have that set of training, you then uh, there are m multiple ways of asking people um, uh, sort of for feedback. So, for example, if people found at the end of each module that they would like more information, and there is you know a demand, every other person is saying I need more information, we can then say okay, the next set of priorities is to go deeper into these uh, particular areas. But yeah. but 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 I think it's essential that we have. Um, that that sort of baseline uh, scalable across a uh, an organization with with technology savvy people and uh, and also those who you know need to have this level of understanding that 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 would be my 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 starting point. True, definitely, yeah, Sammy. So have, initially... you could have then also pull request. The question would be then perhaps as a follow up. Who, who decides about, well, what coming in developer training, what comes in the sales training, whatever. So there yep. we should also think about who who decides then about pull requests. That's right. So, so for example, part of the, this is why I asked, what, what is the format of the content? So while we're developing um, uh, the material, we can, or putting the material together rather than developing it, because obviously we have quite a lot of material to pull from. Uh, to then actually make it um, available for review and gather some uh, feedback, Marcel, as, as you say, that to 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 then get a feeling: is this the right level? Do you know? Would most organisations want this level? Would they would they want a deeper um, level than this? But but my 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 suspicion, you know, having gone through. Uh, the training and certainly have spoken to a number of other organizations about uh, a starting point for training. Most people want that sort of baseline level to then start thinking about, okay, now all my, my developers are trained in, uh, to this level, what is next? Yep. Def uh, definitely, Sam. So we have to look into that aspect as well. So uh, exactly to show that sample, uh, the sample here is not the final one and it's not the perfect one, just a trial over here. So if you can see one level of granularization, what we brought and also according to uh, this might answer Reza's uh, question as well, where we have different levels of training altogether. For example, even in LFC right now, there's one training that is specifically for the developers. And then there's another training which can be applied to OSPO. Right. So similarly, we have uh, we have taken content from LFC and then we have taken content from open, uh, open chain curriculum and then converted them into voices or the user, user stories present in uh, the sharing creates value GitHub repository. And in my imagination, right, a software developer, he would like, he would want to know about these six points on how and why copyright is important for him when he's using your open source code. Right? And he would like to get a little more details on what uh, what is the detail in Wikipedia because that is one of our bi Bibles, was our Bible at least when we were growing up. Now we have a lot more things. So they get a little more background on what's copyright and how it's made use of, who, where did it originally come from and uh, what are the rights or the perks copyright, copywriters have. right? And then what would the details a project manager would want to know on a copyright? So this is the granular level we thought of. Uh, so why we have thought of these two different voices and why we need to understand copyright in these two different ways uh, <clears throat> for two different roles is that if we develop a, a training only for the developers or junior and senior developers, we would not, uh, they wouldn't expect too many details. All they would want to know is, can I use a component? Is it fine? And okay. I'm going with it. But when the project manager has to know about a co copyright or even a license for that matter, he would have to know what are the uh, liabilities for the open source copyright and the package I'm using and wh uh, what are the risks I would be taking? How much money is it going to cost me if, if, if at all there are any legal circumstances I come across with? So we take up these kind of uh, details and then organize them into developer specific trainings, project manager specific training, sales training, OSPO training, like this. And all the topics will be modularized and they'll be reviewed and, uh, you know, more like, how do I say, I'm not getting the word, selected and put together so that it's, uh, it serves the necessity of the audience.
So yeah, this is one of the sample we came across, uh, we, we developed, but uh, yeah, just as an example. Bala, one more thing I'd like to add, but I'm not sure if it is off topic or not, but anyway, I'll, my proposal, because recently, not recently, yesterday I read a news about uh, this Amazon uh, I mean, the Amazon, uh, during their launch, they have used some open source component and uh, they have produced the notice file, but uh, still, the, the, I mean, the, the author of the open, uh, open source uh, project, from that they have copied, actually, they, actually, he expressed this dissatisfaction because uh, ultimately for any, uh, I mean, the owner, open source owner, they, even the, there, you, even there is a mention of simple notice file across uh, the, the company's bill of material is fine, but uh, still they expect at least some some of the contribution back improvements back to the community. So the, if you read this uh, the chat on which I sent uh, the link, if you read that, it clearly explains the some dis some level of dissatisfaction that is lies with not only if this is just one simple case which i just read yesterday but there are so many cases that's been happening for for a while so why can't from if you bring the change from the open chain umbrella open chain standard i think it would be good i mean for every organization should have this habit of upstreaming after their project delivery uh, because because of the deadline most of the organizations wouldn't want to contribute their improvements back to the open source community that's why I, in our organization, is planning at least, I mean, to f to foster this uh, open source ecosystem and keep it live enough. So we planned like after del project delivery to the customer, maybe we could plan some time for upstreaming all our improvements back to the open source community, so that it will also the motivate them to keep the community alive instead of just exploiting all the features over there and. Uh, just providing a simple notice file at the, at the end. So I think from if we include this additional step, this additional step may not bring anything, but indirectly it brings so many benefits back to the organization, every organization. Uh, but all Definitely the what you're saying, it's actually a dream of every open source enthusiast. I'm pretty sure all the 19 people sitting here, okay, excluding me and you, all the 17 people sitting here would agree with this, that if you use something, please do upstream something back. Uh, but that's more yeah, of an that, ideal world. But the, organi yeah. the, the organization, why most of the organization doesn't uh, plan a time for this thing is that because of the deadline that they had committed to their customers. So be that hinders the uh, time that we need to spend back in your organization. Yeah. To spend back probably, probably we can connect it back to this topic by saying, see, okay, uh, you are using open chain and LF trainings. Please do uh, help us at least with your feedbacks, even if not contributing the training, help us with your feedback so that we can uh, improve it further better. Uh, yeah. Please do let us know what part could be made better. So we can Plus, make this as a rule for each organization. Yeah, if it Probably comes from open chain umbrella, start. I think that, that it, this would make sense. This would also foster the uh, community. Yeah. yeah, but of course we are the dreamers here and uh, there is a board who can make a uh, call on this, who can have a discussion on this. And I think the first person who can say yes or no about it would be Shane. So I think yeah, Shane and the other members, senior members or the board members can say on how to implement these rules to be, can we make it mandatory or would it be a problem and all those yeah. things. Yeah, why I'm saying is that I just saw the project manager template in that. So project manager are the ones responsible for planning the time for the any project. So if we, I mean, if we implement this, uh, if we, according to open change standard, if it, if it is a requisite to, for the project manager to plan uh, time allocated for upstreaming back the open source community that would be great I guess so every organization would have this habit of contributing back otherwise it would be <laughs> yes Janish yep. yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely yeah, yeah Shane so uh, what would you say on this feedback part if we have if we start with this oh, yeah. okay we have to start well I mean the the short version, I think, is that everyone's going to be delighted to see more activity in building out training material. So <laughs> you're not going to run into resistance there. 
Um, when it comes to getting details, I'll talk with LF training about, um, for instance, how much of their existing material we can get under public domain and, and so on and so forth. But basically, you can count on me to try to negotiate everything that you feel you need. Eventually, these proposals, or to be more accurate, this activity already underway, will go in front of the board more formally. But uh, you know, on this call, you've got several board members sitting here. Um, <laughs> so, you know, for instance, you've got Sammy right there, you've got Marcel from Bosch. So people are well aware of what's happening and I'll keep them up to date. And I think this group should go ahead, get working, and I'll work on answering the formal questions with LF training and whatnot. So just get started and uh, I'll get started on answering the questions. By the way, I noticed that you know, some of our peers are on the call too. So I saw um, Keith Bergelt from OIN is on the call. So as we build out the training and if we look at things like how do we cover open source and patents, we'll be able to get help from our friends regarding the current state of the community. And uh, that will be important too. That's actually great. So I think uh, since there's no much resistance and we see a lot of, uh, you know, uh, and hand holding or uh, support or more moreover uh, more betterly put uh, can we start with the activity and uh, can we decide on when can, when we can have the call how frequently we can have the call and how exactly do we go ahead any suggestions from anyone please can we have the call bi weekly initially uh, the please? tradition for us was bi weekly um, and, you know, mm -hmm. as long as people aren't burnt out, uh, that generally works well. Mm -hmm. Okay, then. So uh, I will, I will send out at least uh, next four meetings bi-weekly. And then uh, since this was an open agenda call for the next week agenda, if we can decide some, if we can decide one agenda for the next meeting, probably it will start building on from meeting to meeting. Uh, so in the next meeting, can we understand what topics to put together? Yes, please okay. do. <laughs> yeah. And please and give me a shopping list. Um, you know, after this meeting, <laughs> I'll review it. But if you could email me the shopping list of the things you need, I'll go and negotiate Definitely. with everyone about Definitely. that. And and as already Sam, uh, Sammy mentioned, uh, we uh, we may we might need to have a baseline, or we uh, or if there's already a baseline that is thought of, if you you can share it with us and we can put it in our next week's agenda already. I, I think it's um, it would be useful, Andrew, if you can actually have the list of uh, at least the modules that you were proposing. That that would be a good starting point, and then we can discuss that specifically next week. Uh, sorry, not next week, but in the next meeting. Yep. Yep, no problem. Happy to see that. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. Okay, then. So I send out invites for the next four meetings. And uh, next week, we are discussing on the baseline uh, document, which Andrew will be sharing. And then we send a shopping list to uh, Shane, and he get back to us. Okay, and we'll I can finish assure that you everyone will be delighted. Um, LF training will be happy. Our board will be happy. Everyone's going to love the fact we can have something like this in place. Yes, we are hoping for the same. Okay, so thank you everyone. If you have any questions or anything, please do get in touch and uh, we are always available. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Have a nice day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.